Hi, I'm Josh Bloom. Welcome to another video in the RSP Supply Education Series. If you find that these videos are helpful to you, it certainly helps us out if you could give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we will move on to the next step in building an industrial control panel. If you haven't already seen the other videos in this series, we encourage you to go back and watch from the beginning so that you might better understand the entire process. The step in which we will focus on today is continuing on in the wiring phase of the build, but focusing on wiring the analog inputs and outputs for the control panel. Now that we have completed the digital signal wiring, we can move on to the rest of the I.O. wiring in the panel. When wiring analog signals, it can be very tedious and easy to make a mistake due to the amount of terminations required for each signal. It is important to include your shielding when making terminations and to properly identify each wire. Unlike digital signals, which can be much more forgiving if mistakes are made, analog signal wiring requires much more focus and time and can be very unforgiving when mistakes are made. As always, the process in which we will discuss today is just one method of many that can be performed to achieve the very same results. So let's get to it. When wiring analog signals, much like with digital signals, it's important that we take some time up front to review the hardware manual for our PLC to ensure that our drawings are correct and that we are wiring everything and all of our signals properly. Analog signals can be a little bit more complex than just a standard, standard digital signal and so we're more prone to make mistakes during the step. So again, reviewing the manual and our drawings is a really good uh, plan to make sure that we don't make any mistakes during this phase of the wiring uh, process. Uh, we want to again make sure that we follow our drawings as we start to wire very very closely. Uh, again analog signal wiring is uh, much more labor intensive, can be very very tedious so we got to take our time, follow our drawings and we should be just fine. Uh, just like digital signals as well, depending on the hardware that's being used, specifically the PLC, uh, we may need to wire the PLC side of the signal. In the case of this particular build, we're not going to have to do that because just like with our digital signals, we have a pre-wired harness from the factory that are, uh, is provided our PLC that just plugs into the PLC itself. So we don't need to wire the PLC side of the signal. Uh, we're going to be just wiring uh, the terminal block side of the signal. For, so for these analog signals, we are just wire, using this pre-wired harness, wiring those into our terminal block. So again, depending on the hardware that you use, in some cases you may need to wire that PLC side as well, which can increase the amount of labor in your wiring job. So keep that in mind depending on the hardware um, that you use. Also understand that the wire that's going to be used with analog signal wiring is different than standard wire. Most likely we're going to be using a twisted shielded wire. This can be quite a bit different and we need to make sure uh, again that we reference the PLC uh, manual uh, just to make sure that the shielded portion of that wire um, is landed in the right spot or it may not need to be landed at all in between the PLC and our terminal block. It may be that it only needs to be uh, landed from the instrument itself on the field side. But we need to make sure that we again reference the, the manual to make sure that um, it doesn't need to be landed uh, between the PLC and our terminal block. And again our drawings hopefully have this there as well but again it's something we need to double check. So understand that you're going to be using a different type of wire for this um, analog wiring portion of the build. Also one thing to keep in mind is there are going to be quite a bit more conductors with analog signals, excuse me, signals. So it's a lot easier again to make mistakes during this step. So we want to again take your time, uh, just follow your plans closely as you move along. Uh, again, with any wiring, we want to make sure we're not fraying or bird caging our wires in any way so that we can avoid any potential issues or short, short circuits or hazards that, that might create. So take your time, do a nice job. We don't want to have any fraying or bird caging on any of our wires. Just like with our digital signals, if we're using any jumpers uh, throughout our analog wiring, we want to make sure that we secure those jumpers properly. Now some of these are just going to be push-in jumpers. Some of them actually get put into the terminal connection point and we secure them down. 
with our with our little screwdrivers. We want to make sure that those are secured properly because it's very common to see issues with signals related to jumpers that have not been secured properly. So again, take your time during that portion as well. Make sure that those are all installed uh, correctly. Um, in referencing your drawings while you're wiring, you just want to make sure that you have a complete loop. Uh, this is very critical with analog wiring. So we want to make sure we have a complete loop so that uh, we can read our signal when we go to start up and commission. So we want to make sure that our power is being distributed in the proper locations. We want to make sure either neutral or DC negative, depending on if we're using AC or DC power, is landed correctly and in the proper location. If this is done right, we should have no problem in wiring our signal loops and everything should function as expected. So very much um, take your time during this analog wiring phase. Again, it's slower. It's more tedious than the digital uh, wiring portion. So just review your, dra your drawings often. Go slow. Take your time. And you're going to be in good shape moving on to the next step in the bill. As you can see, wiring analog signals takes a great deal of concentration and patience. Take your time during this portion of the build process so that you can avoid any headaches later on. As always, we appreciate your interest and participation in this series and hope you continue to join us throughout the remainder of the build process. In our next video, we will move on to wiring the PLC and any I.O. modules associated with it. So make sure to join us next time as we continue the build. For a full line of industrial control panel hardware and thousands of other products, please go to our website. For more information or other educational videos, go to rspsupply.com, the internet's top source for industrial hardware. Also, don't forget, like and subscribe.